All right, hey folks, this is a real important video because it's one piece of kit I want you to guys to carry because it's really easy, very, very helpful. I'm gonna introduce my guest, this is Doc T. Hey, what's going on, Travis, Doc T. Incredible resource, you don't know, uh, most likely you don't know him, but you should. So this is a good uh, intro. He was uh, just retired 20 years, Special Forces. I actually haven't retired yet, I'm putting the paperwork soon, but yeah, I'm still... Man. You're getting old. Bro. I know, dude. I got, I got, you got to get out of there, man. I got to hang that hat up. That's let, right. And let one of the younger guys, younger guys, <laughs> come in and take out, over. bro. I am non-operational. <laughs> I'm on YouTube, bro. I'm, I'm not operational anymore. Anyway, uh, 20 years, Green Beret medic. So uh, he's uh, invented a lot of stuff that I really like and have used, uh, namely the Blue Force gear, the Microtrauma. micro trauma yeah. pouch, which we just did. I've, I've showed it to you guys before. I'll provide a link for you guys somewhere in one of these. Uh, corners if you haven't checked out that video. Now, let me go on a little bit of a rant. Uh, a lot of you guys are into guns, and that's a good thing, and you're getting lots of training, and trust me, you're going to hear from Travis like the whole video, but this is the rant that kind of frames the video. Uh, a lot of you guys are interested in running and gunning, and some of you guys have even been so ambitious that you took a class, and that's great. Some of you have been very zealous and taken many classes and nothing on the medical side. Listen, uh, some of the most, you know, elite LE feds, uh, SWAT-tastic door kickers in the world wear body armor. And similarly, tier one, tier two guys in the military are also wearing body armor. There's a reason, because if you're going to play with guns and you, you think there's any chance that you, even as a civilian, may get in a gunfight, uh, no matter how awesome you are, how good you are, you can do everything right and still get shot. Uh, having something as simple as a tourniquet with you uh, is a really, really big deal. Don't be the dude that's always training guns and isn't training medical with somebody like uh, this guy and, and carrying medical gear in the same way. Uh, Travis said something that was a little irritating to me and it was good. It was like, I'm, you'd be more likely to, um, if you were going to forget something. Uh, you're, if you're carrying a gun, wait, wait, wait. you said uh, I'd more likely forget to carry a gun than I would. Oh, so yes, for me, uh, Green Beret medic for 20 years, so uh, I've actually run into situations at the gates and stuff like yeah. that, and I'm more likely to grab a med bag than I am to gra grab a gun, which is, you know, hey, yeah. uh, in my civilian life now, sure. that is. You know, yeah. before overseas, you know, you're always got it, but now that I'm trying to transition and become right. like a civilian, uh, I, I just don't carry as much as I used to when I was on when I was active duty. Um, sure. And that's my bad. And that's my bus. And you're going to help me. No, with no, that. no, no. I'm not, I'm not. I don't want to judge it because at the same time, kind of like that's obnoxious and that's backwards. But it's kind of not because you're more likely to need something medical than I think the average Joe for uh, firearm. Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, so there's anyway. a ton of situations out there that you know, pe so much bad stuff happens in this world today. And if everybody would just kind of gravitate towards just a little bit of medicine, mm -hmm. then we could do so much good. Cool. You know, it sucks, it's bad, it's horrible. Yeah. But man, we could do good out of it too. Good. So, you know, I, I like, uh, medicine's love to me. I uh, oh, cool. I didn't want to be a medic. <laughs> I wanted to be a Bravo, I wanted to be a, bra a gun guy, you yeah. know, and they forced me to do it and now I love it. And so now I'm trying to push that word out. That obligatory obnoxious they, oh, whoever they are, they, the, those guys. Those, those. All right, now it's time to really start the video and get in. Uh, there's a few tourniquets out there uh, that are T triple C, the kind of gold standards. Uh, oh, one's the cat, and if you are a gun guy, you know, uh, in any type of tactical team, or even just a civilian that knows anything about combat medicine or looked out of that, you know what these are, cats. Uh, wonderful to put on kit. I've got a ton of these guys. Uh, a little bit obnoxious though to uh, carry as everyday carry. I mean, I, I, again, I've just, I'm a normal dude in my head walking around and I've already got a gun and a knife and my little uh, stabby pen and uh, you know, things of, I, this is a little bit bulky to me. And so for everyday carry, I wanted an easier solution. Doc, is there an easier solution for everyday carry? I wish there was. There's so, uh, you know, yeah, there is actually. Really? Oh, I'm yeah. so surprised. So uh, the rats tourniquet was born in Afghanistan. Right. Um, we, as a Green Beret medic, do, we work with the locals heavily. You know, we're, we're big on language. We're big on culture. We're big on, you know, we're big on the, the ideals that we need to work by with and through these guys. Mm -hmm. And so with that came the need to treat canines, the need to treat children, the need to treat the elderly, the need to treat yeah. all these different situations that, I, don't get me wrong, I love a cat tourniquet. I yeah. carry them in my vehicles, I carry them in my med bags, but 
when I was trying to treat these this constituency of yeah. these people, it just didn't fit. So you're saying this will, you know, you can, we got a dog walking around. She, the yeah, she's right, right here by my feet. Uh, you can use this on a dog and this one not as much. That, and same with the kid. Yeah, same little, with little kids, kids, dogs. Little kids, dogs. Right. Uh, the cat tourniquet is really good at what it does. It's good at the you and me size. Okay. But when you start talking about some of these third world countries that we're still heavily involved in, it doesn't work on the kids. It doesn't okay. work on the elderly. They, you know, I treated a couple kids that their their arms were the size of silver dollars. You know, trying to get something that has this much bulk and and if you look the the width of just this piece of the part of the mechanism that makes it work is it's hard. You know, and it's and it and it's heart wrenching when someone comes to you with a kid that's injured or or hurt and, sure. and you can't do anything about it. Great. Except for hold that kid's arm until you can get to a better situation. Uh, so this, and what is this called? This is the rat's tourniquet. This okay. is the this is actually the 2.0. So this one is fresh off the press. Uh, we, we, we went back to what people were saying and they were asking, they were like, hey, uh, we'd like it to be a little bit longer. So we added six inches. Uh, we stopped using the uh, metal crimpers to hold them together and now they're sewn. This is 100% very compliant now. Okay. Um, before we were getting a couple parts from overseas. And with anything in the military, if you want to sell it to the military, it's got to be very compliant. So gotcha. we really kind of, we're excited. There's going to be a new tourniquet down select coming out soon from Rumor Mill. Yeah. And uh, we're submitting to, to be in that down select. So, yeah. so hopefully soon you'll see a TCCC approved rats tourniquet. And TCCC is kind of like, they haven't approved a tourniquet since like 2004. They're not just like, is it 2004? Yeah, 2004. There hasn't really been a down select, you know, since right. 2004 on tourniquet. So, so it's not the, you know, this uh, it, this isn't TCCC. Well, guess what? Nothing is because they haven't even like... They haven't had, looked at a single right, tourniquet so, um, since 2004. So the real thing is that's not the big standard that I should be looking for necessarily. That, that does mean something. Uh, it's Does it actually work? Absolutely. Uh, and see, I've got data on this, but I have no idea whether this so, is actually work if you, I don't think it has <laughs> See, look you, it and hold on uh, if you guys are interested in something like this I'm gonna put links below for you so chill out you can get it at the end of the video if you're interested they're they're inexpensive work well and do some stuff that this doesn't you can carry it easily every day carry so anyway doc tell us would this work in real life so absolutely um, I worked with a crew of dudes about you know between three to five thousand dudes at a time so with that many Afghans I've seen a ton of trauma. You know, when you think about some of the places we were, you know, Eastern Afghanistan, uh, Northern Afghanistan, Center, you know, Kabul, Afghanistan, I've had a lot of dudes that worked for me that were under me. I started fielding these out to those guys before I even fielded it out to the general public in the United States, mm -hmm. just because I would buy the crap out of them and be like, hey, try this, try this, try this. And I used them kind of as beta testing, but you know, in a good way. And that's where, that's where it evolved to what it is today. With this tourniquet, it's so simple to use, mm -hmm. it's so fast, and it works on more than just the average ranger, the average adult. You know, yeah. it works across the board, which is amazing because, man, I have a five year old. Yeah. And if I wanted to send my, I, I, I do, I send my five year old to school with the Blue Force Gear micro trauma kit, you know, the basic version yeah. without the needles, without the, and he goes to school with that in his backpack. And for me, putting a rat's tourniquet in there, just means everything because I know he's five. He's not going to be able to pull it out and use it, but at the same time, he knows to pull it out if something happens and cool. show it to an adult. Yep. And so then they're able to go, oh my gosh, yep. look at this. I can use this now. Yep. Um, some of the cool saves on these things as kids, you know, there's been a few times where, where I messed up. Yep. You know, I, I learned some really, really hard lessons. Um, one that really sticks out in my mind, uh, you know, one night, uh, I got a call to the gate and I was on, you know, my name was on the board. You know, my name was on the board if something happened for those guys to come wake up. And so the dudes come wake me up. And they're like, Doc Travis, let's go to the gate. There's something going on. They didn't say what. And, and in my freshly awoken state, I grabbed my gun and I ran down to the gate thinking it might be a security issue of some kind. Well, one of the local dudes uh, brought a little girl up to me and she had almost severed her whole right arm from a tractor, you know? And so, and I felt so crappy because as I'm standing there looking at this little girl, it just dawned on me. And I went, oh, you know, and I just, my heart sank yeah. because I didn't grab any medical kit. Yeah. I grabbed my rifle. That's all I grabbed. Yeah. So. Very bravo of you. Yeah, very bravo-ish. Um, you know, being the smart guy that I am, I put direct pressure. You know, I tore, tore my clothes up and used it as an improvised bandage. 
um, wasn't the tourniquet effect that I really wanted, um, we're austere. There's no hospitals. It was just me. Yeah. So I had to take this girl up to my tiny little clinic up on my base, treat her as best I could, stabilize her, give her fluids, get her heart rate going, get her, get, get her back stable so that I could then patch her up and send her on her way to the hour and a half long drive to get to the hospital. Yeah. And so not having this tourniquet with me really hurt me. Yeah. You know, and it really sunk, sank home for me that this little girl could have died because of one of my mistakes. Cool. So patched her up, put a tourniquet on her, put the rat's tourniquet on her. You use this? Yes, I okay. use that because cool. she's so small. She was so small and left it tight, but not so tight. You know, one of the things about uh, this tourniquet is it's it's not elastic. It's it's a it's a hardened material. It's not going to give. You know, the cool thing about the rat's tourniquet is it is elastic. So I didn't have to like, I didn't have to like crush it down to the point where she was going to just be in agonizing pain. I could put it just tight enough, like with circumferential wrapping, and you know, and get it to the point where it would stop the bleeding enough that I could put a really nice dressing on it and send her on her way. And uh, uh, you know that that lesson was a lesson that I learned, and it and it, and it stung. Yeah. You know, you, you're a Green Beret medic. You're you know you want to be like the best of the best. You're you know you sure. do surgeries, you do all this stuff, but yet a simple thing like that could have affected the battlefield. I yeah, mean, man. like think about who that girl's dad was. I don't even know. Yeah. But you know, maybe it was Taliban. Maybe he was a warlord. Maybe you know, but saving his little girl's life changed that guy's mind. May, I don't know, maybe, on yeah. who we are overseas. Uh, you got any other saves with these? Tons. Tons, Tons of saves. saves. Uh, probably a couple dozen. So it's working in real life. It, oh, it's definitely. a legit product. Oh, yeah, it definitely. really does work. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, very good. Afghans. Cool. Uh, I've got dozens of saves with it. Um, the Afghans have hundreds of saves with it. Wow. Afghans. Okay. Cool. You know, like my Afghan medics. Uh, my arms Afghan the size dogs. of silver dollars. <laughs> <laughs> feel like uh, a superhero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah not, so. You know, the dudes are pretty stout. You know, yeah. the guys are, they're, they're normal size, but I... Like I said, I was putting these out to the field to the guys, and and uh, you're talking about three thousand dudes that are fighting the Taliban, fighting sure. in the, and they were getting in ticks all the time. They cool. were getting, so yeah, so many saves with it. Very good. Hey, I wanted to talk just a moment about it, some brass tack stuff. Of uh, let's see, first of all, the price point is about half the cost of one of these, uh, so it's like fifteen bucks or something. Sixteen bucks. Sixteen, 15, 15, 15, 15, bucks. There 95. you go. Comes in a bunch of different colors. If you don't want uh, orange, I use uh, I have black. And uh, mine, I've got a video on how to wrap it like this so it goes through a belt loop. It doesn't, inter uh, uh, doesn't affect my draw stroke or anything. Uh, but, uh, and if I want it, I just pull this off uh, right here, and literally it's just ready to go. So it adds no bulk for me. It doesn't affect my draw stroke. Uh, and, uh, yeah, truth be told, if, uh, I was carrying these, and I like it because it's so just low profile. You can put it in there, and it it doesn't affect anything. It's like you're not carrying it at all. Uh, I, I took a step back because, uh, you know, somebody that I respected just kind of asked me some questions on of like, well, yeah, that's not TCCC. There's not, you know, uh, necessarily data on that. It may or may not be a good solution. And, and, you know, he wasn't ragging on it. It was just kind of a big question mark. And then I had this sacred trust with you guys. And this is why I took a step back. And it's really because if I say something or hold something out, uh, you guys, uh, LE, military, civilians, a lot of you guys may go buy it off my recommendation. If it's not up to snuff good product, then I'm steering you wrong and then I'm jacked up. So uh, it used to be in my old mentality of I just carry whatever I thought was best, but now it's like a sacred trust with you guys. So I, I stopped recommending it. It's not that I wasn't rec not recommending it. It was just that I'm waiting for more data. Now I have the data and I'm saying, yep, I am carrying these. I'll uh, usually always have them with me, at least off-body carry uh, in my vehicle or on my person. I trust Doc T's testament to it, and I appreciate your ingenuity in making it. Uh, if you want to jump in and answer to any of that, that's yeah, great. So and then uh, also, uh, this, we'll show you how to put it on. Yeah, absolutely. And this, apply is, it. this is a Gen 1, and uh, if you look at Gen 1s, they were uh, crimped together. And what we did was we came together and we said, hey, man, how can we make this better? So the Gen 2 is actually sewn together. So now we're sewing it together. It's uh, everything's very compliant now. Some of the stuff we had before, uh, some of the uh, parts and stuff were were from overseas. But now we're getting every, we're sourcing everything in the states. Uh, cool. Actually, here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Utah. Uh, one of the one of the one of the things people asked us was, "Hey, um, you know, what about the length?" Well, with me, I used a, 
we used our friend, one of the guys, Jeff, uh, from Ready Man and uh, Savage Gentleman. He's a stout dude. He's, you know, he's thick, he's stout, and we used his thigh in order to measure to what we wanted for length. And this is a bodybuilder guy. If you go to Ready Man, yeah. you'll see he's huge. He's yeah, a body... no, he's like me. Yeah, I've seen him. He's... he's like a little tree trunk, you he's know? Like and so yeah. we used his thigh as our measurement. So if it'll fit Jeff, it'll fit you. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm not like Jeff. I'm a skinny-ish guy. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of cool stuff going on with it. The color schemes, uh, we just wanted to be able to offer. My thought is if I, EMS guys, are orange, yep. so I do EMS guys for orange. Uh, we have blue ones for law enforcement, red ones I like to push to firefighters, black and tan for operational dudes, yep. you know? And so that's kind of where the colors come from. It's cool. For me, if I'm a doctor at a hospital and I can look at a tourniquet and it's easy, I don't have to write on it or anything and say, oh shoot, this came from an EMS guy, you know? And I kind of know who placed it and I know maybe in a mass casualty situation where it came from. Yep. So that's why, that's kind of the modality behind that. Good. Um, Let's do, it. Me. So, Let's do it. So as always with tourniquets, you always want to go as high as you possibly can. And I don't know if anybody ever explained that to you, but there's two bones that run down the your forearm and there's a single bone up here. So we want to get occlusion. So we want to push that bone up against, or that a nerve artery vein up against the bone. And that's where occlusion comes from. Groovy. Super easy. Um, it's pretty one-handed and you can do it yourself. I actually do it to myself if you want first. Sure. So that they can see how one-handed it really is. So I like to just kind of throw it up high. And you're basically girth hitching that. I'm it's already got a circle, you go through the circle. Uh, it's already got a circle, you just go through the circle. And as you can see, as I'm pulling it, it's, it's getting occlusion and that's, that's plenty hurtful enough right there. That's so it. That's it, that's all it takes. Um, Your so, veins are already starting to explode. <laughs> they're already starting to pop up. I'm getting, awesome. my, I'm getting my pump. I need two of them when I go, <laughs> yeah, when I put on short Dude, sleeve shirts. So who was the wrestler look like a... that had the ties from the 80s? Oh, is that Sting? Randy Savage. Oh, Randy Savage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're Randy Savage and out here, guys. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I'm going to take this off because it's really starting to hurt. Yeah. Um, but what, what a really cool thing is with a piece of... Tourniquets have been around forever. Yeah. Tourniquets have been around for hundreds of years. They used them in uh, World War II. They used them in the Civil War. Uh, and circumferentially wrapping is basically how they use tourniquets. Yeah. Well, we just took those principles and we applied it to this tourniquet. We, yeah. we, we want to circumferentially wrap to build the width that the cat tourniquet would normally have. I could actually build more width than the cat tourniquet by circumferentially wrapping. Yeah. So that's a, big, that's a big thing. It's like, oh, this is so thin, I don't want to use it. But yeah. as you wrap, you're going to build width, yeah. and that's all that matters. The other thing is when you get injured, your body reacts to that injury and it sends everything to it. it goes, yeah. Hey, I've got an injury. I've got to go check it out. Yeah. You get You swell. So if you put a tourniquet on, that's the that's the reasoning behind. Hey, I got to check this tourniquet every five minutes. Yeah. You know, before I was a medic, I used to think, why do I have to check this tourniquet every five minutes? It's not going to fall off. Yeah. It's not because it's going to fall off. It's because or or it's going to move. It's basically because as your body starts to compensate or go into compensated shock, it'll withdraw some of that stuff that it it, it sends all the little firefighters out to fight the fire. Mm -hmm. You know, and as it starts going, okay, I'm good it starts pulling them back to the station. And you know, it says, hey, bring the guys back. We've got to protect the core, basically. And with the bungee tourniquet, it'll, it'll adjust to that. So as you, as you swell, it's going gonna, it's gonna to adjust. And as you decrease swelling, the bungee gotcha. tourniquet, it's going to actually work a little better that way. Not so. bad. Cool. Uh, how can these folks find? First off, if like you've got this stuff, guys, get the rats. It's too simple, too inexpensive, and too helpful to not get. Get it. It's a smart idea. Uh, also, the BFG uh, like uh, micro trauma kits. That's that's good. That's a much bigger investment, but it's an awesome one. Uh, what else? How can they find you? Do you so, do training? Yeah, you... absolutely. So my social media is uh, at two C Med. The number two below in the description. At two C Med. Um, hit me up for training blue force gear and i have a goal a lofty goal to train a million people in the next five years and oh, so we really uh we're excited for what you guys are doing awesome. at, at the warrior poets and we really kind of want to you know not just on medicine but on you know situational cool. awareness and everyday carry and you know good stuff um i did write an article in the november issue of shooting illustrated if you want to learn more about medical kits and in general check that out it's Great. on nra.com cool um, but if you want to get these, Rats Medical, Blue Force Gear, uh, dot com below in the description, uh, and grab them. And, and I, I'm a. Let me just caveat it with this. I'm a fan of all tourniquets. There's not a tourniquet I don't like. Uh, there's 
some that I favor more than others, but I'm a fan of anything that's going to save my friends or my family's life, or Ooh. even people that are, you know, the Good Samaritan law. Very uh, warrior poetesque of yes, you right yes. there. That's good. So I can stamp you with my <laughs> brand. I'm a fan. I'm just a fan of, of helping people. That's cool, bro. And uh, so I carry anything and everything. I carry cats, tourniquets. I carry soft tea. I carry the rat. Um, just SWAT tea? SWAT tea, even. You know, okay. it's a very low vis option. Uh, not my favorite, but I'll still use it if I have to. Sure. Um, but please, if you're not going to buy the rats, buy something. Go cool. do something help someone you Very know good. be there cool. it's we need it in our country right now with all the stuff that's happening you yep. know so just be aware rock on man uh doc t thanks I, so much I guys thanks for tuning in and uh see you next time